In this episode, Roger gives an old facade a pretty and fresh look with easy to maintain facade panels that provide a natural look. What do you need to place the facade covering? Firstly, the hard foam PVC panels. To secure, stroke plugs, stainless steel screws. To draw, a square and for the slanted corners, an adjustable T-square, a hammer, a meter, a bubble level, a battery powered screw drill with a set of drills and bits, a percussion drill, a jigsaw, hand saw or trimming saw for the panels and an angular sharpener for the aluminium profiles. For the line work we use soap wood for outdoors. Finally, we also need the start profile, ventilation profiles and finishing profiles. Depending on your situation, these can be edge profiles, outer angles or inner angles. When you work up high, you obviously need all the appropriate scaffolding or ladders. We here place the facade covering horizontally, so the supported lattice work must be vertical. You do that with a center to center distance of 30 centimeters maximum, measured from the center of one slat to the center of the other slat. I have sawn a distance block I can place between two slats, so I don't have to measure continuously. The support slats of minimum 24 by 32 millimeters are pre-drilled. Do that about every half meter. I first mark all the distances. And now you pre-drill the slats with a wood drill of 6 diameter. We obviously place the soap lattice work level and the bottom at 5.5 cm from the floor. You also drill a hole of 6 mm in the stone. I work with stroke plugs here, so place the plug first. And only then you can hammer the nail in the plug. Of course, the latticework must be perfectly located in one field. If you see that a slat is placed too far to the back, you can adjust it by placing a block behind it. We work outside, so it is best to use plastic blocks. They are available in different thicknesses, and they are a different colour depending on thickness. The vertical latticework ensures good ventilation behind the facade covering. That way the moisture level is not too high, which could cause mildew. It also prevents the temperature behind the facade covering from getting too high. That's why it is important to use latticework of 3cm thick if you work on an insulation plate instead of a stone wall. That provides a greater air cavity. It is important never to fill the opening with insulation. After slatting the wall, Roger can start with placing the facade covering itself. The facade covering we use is a hard foam PVC panel which is UV resistant. It is available in many colours, simply coloured in the mass or coloured in the mass with a top layer in a contrasting colour which provides prettier colour hues. These panels are always placed horizontally, tongue and groove. More attention is needed for an outer corner. You there don't use narrow lattice because if you want to drill it on the facade, you have to drill the outer stone too much and the piece then breaks off. So you always use lattice of at least 7.5 cm wide. That way you can drill fully in the stone. And in addition to that, you also screw both parts of the lattice work together. At the bottom of the lattice work, you start with a ventilation profile. It closes off the profile against dirt and vermin, but keeps the opening open enough for ventilation. You screw that to the start profile. You then slide the facade covering into the start profile. 
By keeping the lattice five and a half centimeters above the floor, you are left with a ventilation opening of two centimeters at the bottom. You start by cutting the ventilation profile to size. That is easily done with a cutter. The depth of the profile must be equal to the thickness of the lattice work you use. You can use an iron saw to cut the ventilation profile or start profile to size in length. You can also use a jigsaw, but you should then mount a blade with fine teeth. Now you pre-drill with a fine metal drill. Now screw the start profile together with the ventilation profile. I use stainless steel screws because we work outdoors after all. Quickly check if the start profile is perfectly level because the start profile is the reference for all the following layers I install. That's OK, so I can screw them all tight. The following is installing the edge profile. They are available in aluminium or plastic. You always start with installing the first part, but you do not place it completely in the corner. You save enough room to place the second part of the edge profile when finishing. For an outer corner or an inner corner, you also first place the first part of the corner profile. The second part is added later. These also are available in aluminium or plastic, both in two parts. You can also use the two profiles for an inner corner because they are both finished on both sides. Pre-drilling the first part of the edge profile. You pre-drill approximately every half meter. You can very simply bring those aluminium profiles to size with an angular sharpener. Rest the first part of the edge profile on the start profile and then screw back again with stainless steel screws. By placing a remaining part of the edge profile, I can quickly check if there is enough room to place the second part of the edge profile later. You measure the first panel from the edge profile and deduct two centimeters. That means one centimeter expansion joint per side. The sidings in hard foam PVC are supplied in lengths of five meters as standard. They are very easy to work with, contrary to the cement fiber version. They are also very light and unbreakable. You can simply cut them to size with a jigsaw or manual saw. The saw cut must not be perfect because it will later be finished behind an edge profile. You place the first panel of the facade covering with the groove in the start profile. To enable the panels expanding and shrinking depending on the outside temperature, you screw as much as possible in the center of the relevant opening. It is best not to screw the screws too deep. Now slide the next panels together, tongue and groove, and screw tight at the top in the tongue. If you have no groove on the location of the slat, you can also screw straight through the tongue. 
To leave the opening open for ventilation, I here install a ventilation profile under the frame tablet. The first part of the edge profile is then placed on this. You place it approximately one centimeter lower than the ventilation profile, because at the end, the second part is placed there for finishing. And then the two parts are precisely equal. This applies under a windowsill, but also when you work up to a crossing or the edge of a roof. To secure the ventilation profile sufficiently, a slat is placed here too. The light weight of these panels makes them easy to handle alone. The left and right part are easy to measure, but for the element under that, it is best to place the remaining part, because you have to respect the expansion joint here too. So now I can measure easily. I don't screw the part under the window tight. Those screws would remain visible even after placing the finishing. Roger places a full slat over the gate to check if the covering is equal and level both to the left and the right of the gate. In the meantime, I check with my two remaining parts how I come out here above the gate. In this case, I am very lucky. I will not have to saw this top plank later. Try not to calculate it in such a way that you end up with a full strip above the gate or the window. You are supposed to saw this off and always start at the bottom with a full slat. Above the window, I will have to saw a panel later. Above the window, you start with an edge profile too, and with the ventilation profile. I have lined up the first part of the edge profile here, with the ventilation profile, because when the second part is placed on top of it, the ventilation profile is thus slightly hidden, and I also have a drainage that has the rainwater falling down and does not lead it inside. Above the edge profile, you again pay attention to an expansion joint. I again place the remaining part to make measuring easier. In the meantime, we are quite a bit higher with the facade covering, so I've installed scaffolding to make work easier. The different panels of the facade covering overlap, and that's why this is suitable for horizontal placement. Do you want to place panels vertically? There are panels available for that too, but then you place a horizontal latticework on the vertical latticework that you always install first because of the ventilation, and the ventilation facade panels are then secured on that. You can use these facade panels for vertical placement, for horizontal placement, but also for the crossing of a roof or a dormer window. The facade panels are 5 meters long, but for a long facade, that sometimes is too short. That's why you always place a coupler between two panels, in this case, an invisible coupler, and you place the manufacturer sides together. If you have to shorten, you preferably use a trimming saw, because you then have a perfect straight cut. If you still want to work with a jigsaw or manual saw, there are also our couplers that remove the saw cut. 
The coupler also makes the seam watertight. Every top and bottom of my opening is closed up with such a ventilation profile that means also here on top at the roof edge. It is screwed to the first part of the edge profile. You place it a bit lower so that when you place the second part of the edge profile on it, it is in line with the top of the ventilation profile and you keep an opening of 2 cm. To transfer that slanting side or the slope of the roof on the facade panels, I use an adjustable T-square. Ensure it is joined up on both sides, tighten it and transfer it on the facade covering. You take the expansion joint into account for the slanted elements too, of course. If you start at the bottom with the start profile, you automatically work up with the tongue. That is particularly important outdoors, because imagine you work in reverse. Rainwater would stagnate in the groove side. For the last element you have no more tongue, so you simply screw it tight as high as possible. By sawing the second part of the edge profiles as mitre joints, the joints are much prettier on the corners. The finishing profile here in the corner immediately ensures that the screw is hidden. To finish the embrasures, there are also special profiles available. They can be easily made to measure with an angular sharpener. Simply assemble with assembly kit. At the garage door, the embrasure is slightly deeper. I there have added some wall cover in addition to the profile, also simply assembled with assembly kit. This old facade was given a completely new look by placing a horizontal facade covering in hard foam PVC panels. These panels do not require annual treatment and are maintenance free. Would you like to watch all the steps of this project again at leisure? You will find everything on our dobit.be website. See you at my next job. <laughs>